Christmas, everybody. It's finally here, the follow-up to last year's video. I'm making even more Harry Potter Christmas ornaments. If you missed it last year, I showed you how to make a ton of ornaments and house color garlands and a snitch tree topper. Basically everything you need to make an entire Harry Potter Christmas tree. And I mentioned that I had even more ideas, so this year, I finally made them. I was only going to do 10 ornaments, but I just had too many ideas, so you're getting 20. I hope you like them. You will need a printer for most of these, and the free printable is down in the description for you to download right now. I've also put links to all of the supplies that I'm using down below, and as many credits as I can find to where I got all of the images from. So warm up your hot glue gun and let's get started. No, really, we're using a ton of hot glue in this video, so go get your glue gun. So first up, we're going to make Mrs. Weasley's clock. There were actually two different designs for the clock in the movie, but this is the one that I found a blank template for, so that's what we're going with. So roughly cut out the clock frame and the clock face, and then use a glue stick to glue those down onto museum board or any thick cardboard that you have. Carefully cut them out with a craft knife, making sure to leave some wiggle room around the clock face. And then, this is what makes it look really professional, go over all of the edges and the back with a brown marker. So you can see how good that's going to look, but before we glue it together, carefully cut out each tiny little clock hand, which I designed in Photoshop to match the ones from the movie. Once you have all of those cut out, use a thumbtack to poke a hole through the center of the clock face, which I marked on the pattern, and then use a thumbtack to also poke a hole through each teeny tiny hand, and I found this was easiest to do on a cutting mat. Next, grab a small piece of wire and a small bead and use hot glue to glue them together. Then carefully thread each hand onto the wire to get a Weasley family flower, basically. Push the end of the wire through the clock face and glue it down on the back, but be careful because wire conducts heat so I almost burned my finger on this step. Then just glue the clock face to the clock frame and add a hanger and you're done. I'll be honest, the hands don't move super easily, but they do turn and it is just so cute. Someday I would love to actually build the clock frame from dowels and balsa wood, but I just didn't have time to do that for this video, so for now, a printout works just fine. This next one is a really similar process. We're going to make an educational decree. Again, roughly cut out the two pieces and glue them to museum board. Cut them out, leaving some extra room around the back piece. Go over the edges and the back with a brown marker, and then just glue the two pieces together and glue a hanger onto the back. Again, I would love to have actually built a wooden frame, but I still think it looks really cute and the subtle 3D effect from having the two layers is really effective in person. And I only made the one, but I could totally see you making tons of these for all of the educational decrees, maybe even decorating a small tree just with those. So cute! Anyway, moving on. Something that I really wanted to make last year and didn't get to is the wizarding candy. I found this scan online of the Birdie Bots box. Okay, that's really hard to say. <laughs> And the scan, luckily, it already had the tabs noted on it. So I just scaled it down to make it ornament sized and printed it out. And I find it easier to cut out the inside shapes before you cut out the whole thing. So go ahead and do that and make sure that you score along any of the fold lines. Also, 
Also, I ended up cutting off these tabs up at the top because you only need them if you're going to be opening and closing the box, but since we are gluing it together, we're not gonna use them. And then, before we start gluing, I also grabbed a plastic takeout box and I cut little rectangles to be the windows of the candy box. I found that when gluing these in, it's more important that the glue is still really hot than it is to get full coverage around where you're gluing. So just put down your glue and then super quickly get the plastic on there. So once you have all of the windows glued in, just glue the box together. But before gluing the top, make sure that you add your Birdie Bots beans. I'm using perler beads for this since they're about the right size and they come in all different colorful colors. I'd also recommend gluing a hanger to the inside before gluing the top shut. And that's it, there's our mini Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans, so cute. So, you know, if I was making that one, I also had to make a chocolate frog box. Once again, I found a scan of the entire package online, so I scaled it down. And don't worry, this one is actually easier than the Birdie Bots beans box. <laughs> Begin by cutting out the entire shape and scoring along the fold lines. glue these little triangle tabs in place to form the bottom half of the box. And then once again, I realized we don't need these top tabs since we're not going to be opening and closing it, so I just cut those off. And finally, glue the top of the box into place to the bottom of the box and add a hanger onto the back. Now, normally, I would never advocate for having less chocolate than more chocolate but I just cannot get over how cute these little candy boxes are. Plus, if you've ever been to the Harry Potter theme park, you could buy all of the candy, save all of that packaging, scan it in, scale it down, and you could make tons of mini wizarding candy ornaments. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this next ornament is the one that I was the most nervous about. I wasn't sure if it would work. We're going to be making a house points counter. For this one, you'll need eight of these tiny jars and enough small beads in each house color to fill an entire jar. Distribute the beads between the jars to represent how many points each house has, and of course, you can give your house the most points. Then use a glue gun to stop up the top of the jar for the jars that are going to be on top. Make sure that none of the beads can fall out and then glue the two jars together to get an hourglass shape. Once you have all of the jars glued together, this step is optional, but I'm using a small piece of ribbon to cover up the seam where the jars meet. After that, grab some dowels. I already painted mine with this brushed metal paint, which I'll link down below. Mark the exact length of the hourglass on a round dowel and cut two pieces that are that size. Then line everything up on a square dowel and mark the length. And again, cut two pieces that are the same size. Now it's just time to glue the entire structure together. So once that's all in place, I think that looks so good. Finish it off with whatever little beads or findings you have around. I love how this came out. As I said, I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work, but I think it looks even better than I was picturing it. Okay, so next we're going back to the printables. We're going to make Sirius's Azkaban prison sign. Roughly cut out the front of the sign and glue it onto black museum board. Then use a sharp craft knife to carefully cut out all of the inside shapes, which I'm not gonna lie, 
It took forever, but trust me, you can do it. Once you have the whole thing cut out, color the edges of the paper with a black marker, then glue the back piece onto the same black museum board and trace the front of the sign onto it. Cut it out and again, go over the edges with a black marker. Then all you have to do is glue it together, add a hanger, and you're done. This one is pretty simple, but just like before, the subtle 3D effect is actually really effective in person, even if it did take literally forever to cut out. Okay, this next one I cannot believe I didn't do last year. It's Luna's Spectrospects. Carefully cut out all of the shapes and then grab another piece of that clear takeout container. Mark and cut two circles to fit behind the glasses. Then use a blue marker and a pink marker to color them in. I found that brush tip Sharpies work really well for this. Once the ink is dry, flip them over and color the back as well. Then glue them into place and glue the arms into place too. So I'm realizing now I probably should have printed these double-sided or printed a second set to glue onto the back so that the pattern continues all the way around. But you guys, I already spent so much time on these ornaments. So that's just a little tip if you want yours to look better than mine. Okay, getting back to the magical food and drink, next we're going to make a pumpkin juice bottle. Start with the two printouts and a mini airplane sized bottle. If you don't have a brown bottle, use brown paint to coat the inside of it and let it dry. Then cut out the labels and glue them onto the front of the bottle. So that's looking really good, but we need to figure out how to make a pumpkin for the top of the bottle. So I was looking around at what I had and I noticed that this cactus eraser is about the right size and vaguely pumpkin shaped. So I painted it orange, but then when I put it in place, I didn't love how it was looking. So I grabbed my saw and I cut the top off of the plastic bottle. And then when I put the pumpkin in place, that looks so much better. So just cut a hanger from green string to be the pumpkin stem and glue it all together. And there we go. Now we have a mini bottle of pumpkin juice. Okay, these next few are really easy, so we're just gonna knock them out really quick. To make wizarding coin ornaments, just cut all of the coins from the pattern, glue the front onto a museum board and cut it out. And I found that for round shapes like this, it is way faster to cut with heavy duty scissors than with a craft knife. So once that's cut out, glue the back of the coin onto the back, making sure the front and the back line up, and then go over the edges with a matching marker. Glue a hanger in place, again matching the color to the coin, and you're done. These are so quick to make, so you could make a ton and make your tree look like Harry Potter's Gringotts Vault. Next, we've got the Dumbledore's Army sign-up list. I found this online and I just overlaid it onto an image of parchment, so cut that out. But on the sides, cut a slight wavy line. That's because we want it to look like an unrolled scroll. So use a pencil to curl the top and the bottom of the paper to give it a little more visual interest and definition. Once you're happy with how that looks, glue a hanger onto the back and we're done. I told you these would be quick, but I think if anyone looks closely at your tree, they're going to be so impressed by the level of detail. Next, we're going to make the Yule Ball program, and you'll definitely need small detail scissors for this because it's really tiny, really fiddly. Cut it out the best that you can, and then go over all of the edges with a gray marker. Score along the fold lines, fold it up, and add a silver hanger. This one is really simple, but it's not necessarily the most durable. So if you're planning to save it for next year, make sure that you pack it away carefully so that the tops don't get all bent around. 
Okay, this next one is a serious deep cut. It is the doodle that Draco draws of Harry in, I think, the third movie. And I think I read in one of my books that this was actually drawn by the production designer's son. So you'll notice that on the printout, it's a little bit faded. That's because to make it really look hand-drawn, we're going to draw it ourselves. But first, before we get to that, tear off the edges to make it look ripped out of a notebook. Then use a black pen to trace over all of the lines to recreate the drawing. Once you're happy with how it looks, admire all of your hard work and then crumple it up. And now we're just going to glue it onto a piece of museum board that's a little smaller than the drawing. Just like all the others, and a hanger, and then we're done. So if anyone recognizes this on your tree, you will know that they are also a mega Harry Potter fan. Okay, once again, this next one is another deep cut. This is Luna's list of the things that she lost at the end of the fifth book that she thought that Nurgles had stolen, but actually everyone was just being really mean to her and taking her things. So cut it out, glue it onto museum board, and cut it out again. You could leave it like this, but I want to make it look like it's hung up with Spello tape. So grab some sparkly washi tape or contact paper. Cut a small piece that's about the right size for a piece of tape for this size poster and press it into place. And you'll want to wrinkle it slightly so it looks kind of haphazardly hung up. Add another piece onto the bottom and then we have to cover up the stickiness on the back. So cut another piece and press that over the back Flip it over and trim the excess. And how cute is that? The tape adds that extra little special touch. And again, this is one where you know anyone who recognizes it is a serious Harry Potter fan. All right, once again, taking a break from the printables, we're going to make Quidditch hoops out of old bracelets. I was trying to think of how to attach a pole to the bottom of the bracelet without just gluing it on there, which wouldn't be very stable. So I had the idea to cut a little tab into a paper straw. We can fold that around the bottom of the bracelet and glue it in place and that makes it so much more stable and so much more durable. And since it's a paper straw, we can trim it to whatever length we want. So once you have three of those made, give them a coat of silver and black paint. I'm mixing the paint right on the bracelet because I want it to look a little streaky and imperfect so that it looks aged and weathered. And the reason that I'm painting a silver bracelet silver is because we also have to paint the straw and I want the colors to match. So once they're painted, that's all there is to it. I made the hangers out of thread so that they would be pretty subtle. And bonus, these go perfectly with these Quidditch player ornaments that I made a few years ago. I'm gonna link that DIY down in the description. Next up, we're going to make the Ministry of Magic paper airplanes. And I wanna give a shout out to the blog 10 Digits and a 2014 tutorial that's posted on there because I'm basically following that tutorial exactly, only scaled down. So cut out the pattern and glue it back to back. And you should print these on normal printer paper and not cardstock, since we're going to be doing a lot of folding and you don't want it to get too bulky. So for the actual folding, you can follow along with what I'm doing or refer to the blog post, which I'll link below. But basically, we're just folding it into a paper airplane using a bone folder to make all of the folds really sharp and crisp. Once that's all folded up, cut out the tiny circle from the pattern and glue that in place. And then use some gold washi tape to add the gold tip to the paper airplane. Glue a hanger right up top to hide the knot inside. 
and then you're done. This is actually so fun to play with and to make it zoom all around. I love this one so much. So staying on the Ministry of Magic theme, we're also going to make a Ministry of Magic ID card. Go ahead and cut out and score the outside and the inside of the ID booklet. And then you can either use the backs of the paper that were printed on cardstock, but to cut down some of the bulk, um, I printed mine on printer paper and I'm going to use that instead. So cut those out and glue them to the back of each piece. Then grab a needle and embroidery thread and we're going to sew the two pieces together in a figure eight pattern. Tie that off and now you have a little booklet that is an exact replica of the one from the movie. You could even Photoshop your own photo in here if you wanna make a personalized one or you can just go with Mafalda Hopkirks like I've done. Okay, next we're making another cute little book. Hmm, I don't know if cute's the right word. It's Tom Riddle's diary. You're going to need some scraps of leather or faux leather. So cut a rectangle that is about the size you want your book to be. Then mark that size on off-white paper and score along the edges. And then you can tear the paper to get rough edges that look kind of old timey and weathered. Once you have four of those, fold them in half and nestle them into each other. Place the leather around the outside and clip it in place while you sew it together. We're doing the exact same stitch as the last one, only this time I did five points rather than three. So now we have a tiny book but to personalize it as Tom Riddle's diary, use a gold ink pad to add ink to each corner and to add his name to the front. We're just not gonna talk about the atrocious letter spacing here, but I mean, he's Voldemort. He doesn't deserve good kerning, okay? So you could be done here, but I wanted to add the spot where Harry stabbed the basilisk fang through it so I used a craft knife to cut a small X and fold up the edges. Use hot glue to hold them in place and use your sewing needle to kind of manipulate where everything is going. And you can use a little black paint to finish it up. It's a little hard to see on camera because it's so dark, but in person it looks so good. I just love such detailed little miniatures. Okay guys, we're almost done, just three ornaments left. So I never thought that I would be making a toilet Christmas ornament, but it's Moaning Myrtle, we've gotta do it. Cut out the two toilet seat shapes and trace them onto museum board. Cut them out with heavy duty scissors and you can use a piece of sandpaper to smooth the edges. Then cut a small piece of museum board and cut halfway through to form a hinge. Glue that onto the two pieces of the toilet seat to get something like this. Now you could use the image of Myrtle that's printed on cardstock, but I am just way too extra in this video, so I actually printed her onto a printable transparency. So cut her out and glue her into place. And it's actually a really good effect because she looks totally ghost-like coming up out of the toilet. So while I was printing on transparencies, I also went ahead and printed this image of the Hogwarts ghosts. All you have to do here is carefully cut them out, leaving the smallest hint of an outline around them. Then add a hanger from sewing thread or fishing line, anything really subtle that will basically disappear on the tree. They don't really look like much on the table, but when you put them on your tree, they do actually look pretty ghost-like, and anyone who takes a close look at your tree is going to be super impressed by how detailed it is. And finally, 
our very last ornament, cut it out, and then mark every half inch on the back. Use a small hole punch to punch a hole at each mark, and then color some twine with a black marker to make it look like black rope. Put a piece of tape on the end and then feed it through the holes to make it look like it's really hanging up. Curl the paper a bit to make it look like it's actually made of fabric. And then glue one end of the string to the back and bring the other end around and glue it down as well. And then just like we did with the house banners last year, add a little glue to the center of the string and pinch it closed to make a more decorative hanger. And that's all there is to it. I love how this one came out. It looks like it is actually hanging on a wall. So I hope you all liked this year's set of Harry Potter ornaments. That was kind of a lot, but if you want to make them for yourself, make sure that you head down to the description for the link to the free printable and also links to all of the supplies that I used. And if you haven't seen last year's video where I made 20 more ornaments and the snitch tree topper and the house garlands, I'm gonna link that video right down below as well. Also, I just want to address one thing really quick. I know that Ravenclaw's colors are actually blue and bronze in the books. I am aware. I just didn't have bronze tape and I had already spent so much money on the other supplies. Plus bronze tends to look a little brown on camera. So I decided to go with the movie colors of blue and silver. I hope you can forgive me. So I would love to know in a comment which ornament was your favorite this year. And if you're watching all the way to the end, leave the word Weasley somewhere in your comment and then I'll know that you watched this entire very long video. Also let me know if you wanna see another one of these next year because I'll be honest, I had even more ideas that I didn't get to this year. I already have a list going. Let me know if you wanna see those. There are just so many things to make, like the list is endless. So this is my last video of the year. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting and sharing. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday and I'll see you all next decade. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Bye, everyone.